going on everyone this is mg the future today i'm going to bring you another exclusive tutorial for the machine masters or ableton live masters um, as you can hear by the style of the instrumental today i'm going to be dissecting j dilla or as i like to say reverse engineering j dilla and ableton live i'm also going to do a brief bit in machine as well to help you guys out um, with a pretty cool chopping technique um, besides just the basic Dilla stuff, I'm going to go through some pretty cool tools and utilities that will make creating these kind of tracks um, easier for you. Um, the first one I got up is called Zynaptic Unmix. Um, it's really hard to describe, but essentially it isolates drums out of samples and also enhances drums in your mix, which is really dope. Another cool tool or utility here is called whosample.com. I know a lot of people might be up on this, but depending on where your skill set is and what you've been looking into, this website pretty much will find most of the popular samples used in modern songs. Which brings me to the next tab, which is going to be eBay. We could just buy records forever, man. I mean, it's crazy the price that some of these records go for. But once you find some samples you like, you can look it up here. You can go to the seller. Usually they're hip hop heads, so you can go to their other items and find other dope records, which is probably the smartest thing to do, you know, finding samples by association. Another cool thing that I like a lot, this is called all8.com. Basically, it's just a tap tempo. It works off of your space bar, which is a little bit more responsive than the mouse and sometimes even your MIDI controller, depending on your latency. But usually when you play in a sample uh, without time stretching, you can just tap along to it and get the tempo real fast. Another cool thing to check out is equipboard.com. Right here I looked up Jay Dilla and so far they kind of outlined different machines he's used in his career based on videos and um, interviews he's done or people talking about him. Um, and now alternatively to this stuff, you don't necessarily have to do this to make Jay Dilla beats. As I'll show you, um, I don't use any of this. I do have an analog synthesizer, but I'm not using it for this video. But if you want one, you can check out the Moog Minotaur. It says bass, but of course, if you play high range, it'll do a lot of cool leads as well. The Arturia, same story. And of course, for the sampler and the lo-fi effects, the SP-404 SP and any version thereof. If you're not trying to buy this stuff full price, you go to Reverb.com and search for whatever you want and you can find them at better deals, older models. You're just looking for something that resamples and has a lo-fi um, setting on it. And I think all of the Roland SPs do. In fact, so without talking too much more and getting talking your head off, I'm going to go ahead and get into the first track. Um, after that track, I'm going to get into the machine track. And then after that, I'm going to go into the final track. So bear with me. So the first part is how to isolate drums from breaks or samples. And this is going to go into that first site that I showed you. This is Anaptic. The demo is for 30 days if you have an iLock. And basically what this thing does is two things. Either A, it's going to highlight the drums from a sample or a mix. Or B, remove and muffle the drums from a sample or a mix. I'm going to use a random drum loop here. So this thing is easy to use. You move the pink bar left to remove, you move it right to increase. So as you can see, that could be really useful. In this particular track, I did it for a different sample that had a hi-hat loop in it. And I ended up resampling it because that particular plugin uses a lot of CPU when it's running. So definitely something you would want to resample and use on the fly or commit early to. And you kind of still hear the guitar a little bit on this one, but it definitely highlighted the hi-hats a whole lot and that's really what I wanted it for because that's what my groove template is going to be based on. So real quick, this next part is going to be about the groove template that I mentioned. To do this, I used the isolated hi-hats that I made. I fixed them after the fact, so my groove template is actually based on what this loop is like without correction on the grid. And what you do in Ableton Live is you go over here to this wave icon, open up your groove pull, 
and you drag your sample or your rhythm reference and it analyzes it for you, all the warp markers in gray, kind of like tick points, and that's where your quantize is going to follow. And when that's done, you'll see the name of it, and you can select it from your grooves on your clip, your audio clip or MIDI clips. It works on both types of audio. So for instance, you have something like this, which is the straight program of the drums I did. It's pretty cool, but it's not in that groove um, that we're talking about when we talk about J Dilla. Of course, you can shift notes. I want to show you that real quick before I get into it. Um, I believe it's hold down the command key on Mac and then use your cursors to kind of tick over so you can kind of move things off meter a little bit. And that you can do in machine too, Fruity Loops. Everyone has that nudge feature. You apply the groove from your hi-hats to your drums like I did here, and it becomes more like this. And as you can see, the different changes that were made. And then you can use that groove over and over. You can use it on your sample chops. You can use that on your bass line. But it helps you get that humanized feel that Dilla is known for. A lot of people have done videos on this, but I feel like they kind of missed the point of it. Um, and I guess you wouldn't know the struggle unless you've had an NPC or an old drum machine to why these features are really dope. Um, and now you don't have to do a whole bunch of copy and pasting and adjusting start times of samples. Um, a lot of old school cats know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to show you how to do that in Ableton. And in fact, when this feature came out a, m a few months ago, that's when I actually decided to buy Ableton because I was on the fence for a while. But this sold it to me. I'll show you. So here's just a random sample. And what you want to do when you chop samples like this, let me make a new one. You can do insert new MIDI track. You can go to instruments, simpler, drag it into the empty space. Then your audio track, once you got it looped up, you could trim it, align it to grid, everything that you want. Once you commit that, you drag it into your Simpler, just like this. And as you can see, Simpler has three different modes. You got the classic mode, the one-shot mode. Classic's just regular playback, sort of like uh, single shots like bass lines, piano keys, things like that. One-shot's more for like drums or voices and sound effects. Slice is their new function. Slice automatically chops it up across the MIDI range for you. So if you're using something like a drum break or something, you can isolate the kick, the hat, the snare, etc. Um, Ableton kind of did that already with their sampler, which is in Suite. You can right click and um, send each chop to its own pad or note. But this just keeps it all in one instrument, which is dope. But what I like even better than that is that you have trigger. Let's lower its sensitivity. So trigger, you just touch it and it plays the whole thing, which is dope. Gate, if you tap it, it doesn't play the whole thing. You have to hold it. But what's even cooler than that, you got poly mode, which you can play two at the same time. And then you have through, which is what the hip hop dudes wish they had 10, heck, five years ago, let alone when Dilla was really at it. So if you hit a key, it plays the whole thing. Let's put that on trigger. So yeah, that's that. Um, the mode you're going to want is slice on trigger and through. Adjust your sensitivity to adjust the start points automatically for you. And you'll get to chopping some sick stuff in no time. So in this part, I'm going to show the machine users how they could benefit from these techniques as far as the chopping and slicing goes. Machine makes it pretty easy, but still it's a lot of extra steps. And you'll see why I like the new slice feature in Ableton so much. So essentially what you're going to want to do is find you a nice sample to work with. Okay, so that one's cool. So normally machine you guys would go to slice or something. All these different features tech that you there's a lot of things you guys have that Ableton has in that regular view 
However, when you do this, there's no playthrough option. You're left with whatever's on each pad. Sometimes that's cool and other times it's not. But let me see. So that's how you use the tap tempo. You let your sample play. You let your sample play and then you could tap your tempo out. So that's really useful. So I already know that's going to be 102. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this project to 102 real quick. All right. So let's get the slicing the way that I do it in machine. So instead of you using an auto slicer or something like that, we're going to go ahead and set this up. So first things first, set the polyphony to one. Um, this way you can just chop itself off kind of thing. Next, if you want to pitch the sample, um, you can do that now. But remember when you pitch it in machine, it's not time stretched. So you got to get tap out the new tempo. Next, any filters you want, you can go ahead and take care of that here as well. And if you want to do any emulations, go ahead and handle that. All right, from here, I'm going to click in here. I'm going to have it choke itself. So one. And then once you've done that, it's just a matter of copying that setting to multiple pads. Just for this demonstration, I'm going to use four, but you can use as many as you'd like. All right. So all you're going to be doing now to chop them up is go pad by pad. So pad one's the first slice. Pad two might be something else. And that's pretty much it. You can get really tight starting points on that. And each time you play one sample, it plays the whole sample from its starting point. And that's an old school technique a lot of NPC people used to have to do. It's really dope. It saves your sample memory. But in this case, it just makes the chopping a lot smoother. So hopefully that helps all you machine users out a little bit. Okay, so we're almost through this part of the tutorial. I feel like there's so much more I can teach you guys, but... I've noticed every segment so far has been about two or three minutes. Um, this is probably by far one of the most important segments because it deals with the technique of getting your kick to stand out and how he creates rhythm in his samples and his other elements using compression. So let me show you this real quick. What I got going on here is just a kick drum audio routed from the impulse that I'm using. It's got his own audio channel so I can use it as a side chain. It's like an auxiliary on my sample track so there's two different things going on I got a chop sample here and I got a regular sample playing out which I'll get to later but on the chop sample part on both of them actually I have a compressor and my settings are real simple I got the 2 to 0 or 2.0 to 1 ratio a really quick attack and a release to let the kick through and I'm gonna see if I can just mute it so you only hear that And the side chains here is from the kick. And what it's doing is every time the kick comes in, it ducks the sample's level. And let's make it a little bit more extreme. And I like to do that on everything in these kind of tracks. I even got it set up everything except for other drums, of course. So the sample, the bass, any keys or synthesizers you add on to it, you could just side chain it to the main kick because it, since the kick itself is kind of off groove a little bit, that ducking itself will also cause a push on the envelope of all the other elements. Well, put it all in the same pocket and groove basically. So that's it for that one, side chain compression. Okay, so this, for this final part, I'm going to show you a pretty cool tool that Ableton has that they made for DJs. And of course, you know, Jay Dilla was also a DJ, so you can hear that 
crossfading and scratching and a lot of um, acapellas and concerts and speeches that he puts into his tracks. And um, I'm not sure that this is the way that he did it, of course. Um, we're on two different platforms, but this is a way that you can do it. As I pointed out earlier, especially in the samples, let me show you what I got going on. So I got the intro part of the sample cut off. I got the sample verse part chopped up how I liked it and I transposed it down one octave via 12 steps. Then I have the actual hook of the sample itself regular. Um, and what I'm going to do is blend them back and forth. So let me show you how you set that up. So Ableton has this feature crossfade down here, it's the X. And um, be basically it crossfades from A to B or dead center. So you have one sample at A and another sample at B just by selecting it or unselecting it. So because all my other elements are not selected at all, they're always playing no matter where that crossfader is. And I'm gonna show you how I use this so you can get an idea of what's going on and as you listen to Donuts again, you'll be able to hear exactly what I'm trying to recreate. That's pretty cool. You could hear like he has two different samples from two different sections of the beat and he kind of brings them in and switches them out like every four or eight bars or so. And what I've done is I clicked on MIDI and I mapped this to my mod wheel. You just click it and then move the mod wheel on your MIDI controller and it'll move back and forth. Or you could just do it manually as well. And then one last thing to point out, my bass line was absorbed from the verse chops. So they're not in key with the hook. So I'm crossfading the bass line as well. So you might be able to do another bass, assign it to B to go with the hook. But yeah, man, that's a lot of potential in this crossfade option. In fact, your movements are recording when you actually record through your session. So it was a really dope tool to have. So hopefully that's a cool way to use that for hip hop and sample production. Okay, so this is the last part of the video, of course. Um, this is more about arrangement than anything else. Um, when I was listening to The Shining and Donuts, I noticed Dilla use a lot of live voice elements, so different acapellas he was scratching in and out, a lot of different, um, sound like concert intros and comedy skits and different things that he'll put in to kind of give the beat some life, you know, things of that nature. So I completely understand why he was doing it. Um, but I kind of took it a different step further. All the different vo vocal samples that I'm using um, all have a common theme of dream. So the main sample, Cry of a Dreamer, I got another sample altogether called Dreams um, from the game in Kanye West. You might recognize that. All kinds of stuff. So it's pretty dope once it plays all together. Um, I didn't bother key matching on this one because that's not something that you would do with turntables. Not easily, at least. So I'm going to shut up now. Hopefully you guys like this. Of course, again, this is MG The Future with Machine Masters and Ableton Live Masters. Definitely like the video. Leave us a comment and be sure to subscribe. I got a dream that one day that one will stop laying their belly out and shit. Goddamn dream, shit. One day, one day we.